Okay, so before we begin today's lesson, we're just going to go over a few quick vocabulary things that you need to know. First, a positive slope. Well, that's obviously going to be bigger than zero. And when you look at it from left to right, you'll notice that it looks like it's pointing up. So for example, consider the one down here at the bottom. As we go from left to right, like we read, we notice that the blue line is pointing up. So the blue line is an example of a positive slope. Similarly, if you consider the yellow line, it's not pointing up, it's pointing down. That's going to have a negative slope. The yellow line is smaller than zero. Intercepts are where it crosses the axis. Notice we have two axes, so we can, we're going to have an x-intercept where it crosses the x-axis. And the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and circle the x-intercepts. We'll use purple. Circle the x-intercepts. And I'll use orange to circle the y-intercepts. Today we're going to be talking about slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form has the generic form y equals mx plus b. We'll talk more about that here in a second, but let's first just kind of show how we'd go about finding this. I'm going to teach you two methods in this video. One of them is creating a table. Let's go ahead and look at number four on your homework. y equals negative 2x minus 1. First, I'm going to just figure out some x points and figure out where they fit on the corresponding line y. So let's, I, we can pick whatever numbers you want. I like to keep mine close to zero and whole numbers because it's just easier. So let's try negative one, zero, one, two. You can pick other numbers if you want. These are just the ones I chose. So let's plug them in. Plug them in for x here. So let's go y equals negative two times one. Actually, that's a negative one minus 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. Let's go ahead and do the next one. y equals negative 2 times 0, minus 1. 0 minus 1 equals negative 1. Similarly, you could plug them in and find negative 3, negative 5. Test it out if you don't believe me, or you can take my word for it. From there, we can go ahead and put in our axes and just plot these points. We have negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 3, and 2, negative 5. We graph our line. That has a negative slope, so there's our line. That's one way to do it. Let's talk about the other way. So we have y equals negative 2x minus 1. When we talk y equals mx plus b, Note that the b 
represents the y-intercept. And the m is the slope, or the steepness of the line. So we can recognize this as our y-intercept, and this as our slope. So let's go ahead and graph another line. Our y-intercept is negative 1, so we'll start at negative 1. Our slope is negative 2 over 1, because any number has a, has a 1 underneath it. So we can go ahead, rise over, remember a slope from yesterday. Slope is rise over run. So notice we change in the y direction, our rise, negative 2, 1, 2, and our run is 1. Our rise is 1, 2, our run is positive 1. Connect the dots. There's our line. Compare that to our other line. You'll see they're identical. Just another way of doing the exact same thing. Let's try one more problem as an example. y equals negative 7 over 4x minus 5. Oh boy, this looks kind of intimidating. I promise you it's not that bad. Oops, that's an ugly axis. I'll try again. All right. What's our y-intercept? Where do we start? Negative 5. So we start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. Now we have our slope negative 7 over 4. Going down 7 doesn't seem like the best idea, so let's go up 4. I mean up 7. 5, 6, 7, and over negative 4. Which puts us right there. We have our two points. That's enough to make a line. And there we go. That's how we graph when from slope-intercept form.